in this video we're going to be going through convolutional neural nets and convolutional neural nets is a type of neural nets that's used in, in images so for this tutorial i'm going to be using the MNIST uh, data set and that's a set of handwritten digits from 0 to 9 and we need to classify them into what number it is okay so in tensorflow they have this um, examples uh, sub module i guess which from which i can uh, import this input data function right and what what that does is i can call this um, mnist.train.next batch which will give me whatever number that i need so uh, so tw it, over here it's asking me for 20 images of x and the corresponding label y okay but uh, what they've done though is that they've flattened the image right so 20 so the 28 by 28 image uh, turns out to be 784 pixels okay and the 784 pixels they flattened it into one long vector the y on the other hand is simply the the actual thing that is corresponding to so in this case the, the first few numbers are eights a zero seven and so on okay so uh if we look at x1 um uh, this is what 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 the actual image is just notice that i've had to reshape it in order to sh show you what the image is okay be before we move on to um actually doing a uh, the machine learning side of it just looking at the data set the histogram just notice I was between zero and one. Okay, so what that means is that they reprocess or rather scale the image so that the maximum and the minimum is between zero and one. Okay, so um, I've taken a batch of thousand as training and testing. Um, at, at least, okay, so actually the reason I've taken thousand over here is because I want to use uh, scikit-learn's log logistic regression before we uh, move on to a full-blown convolutional net. Okay, so when we do logistic regression and then fit it, the accuracy that we end up getting is 88%. Okay, so uh, keeping that in mind, let's let's move on to the next set. Um, now, before we move on, um, one thing that I need to do is show you this um, yield thing over here. So, because because TensorFlow is giving it instead of batches. I've, I've made this uh, yield function, I suppose, so that um, I can continuously get new training batches rather than relying on this thousand. The only reason I did it over here is logistic regression from scikit-learn can't handle the full data set in one go. Okay, so it will just take far too long for me to train and probably might run out, of, might even run out of RAM. So because of that, over here, it, I, I want it in batches, loaded into memory, and I have this yield function. So. Um, what we've done over here is, okay, I might actually skip this, this section over here. You can look at it uh, by yourself. Let's look at doing a one, one hinder layer network. So the number of pixels over here I've set to 784. The first layer I will have 50 hidden units and the activation is going to be ready. And the final, remember because we are classifying into 10 classes, we have 10, we need 10 outputs and the activation is a softmax function. Okay, so I have explanation of the softmax function over here, but essentially what it does is it takes a bunch of 10 numbers and squeezes it into being between 0 and 1 so that they add up to 1. Okay, we compile the Keras model and then instead of doing fit as you probably used to doing, we use dot fit generator. Okay, so that's this is where this function comes into use, this train data generator over here. Okay, because it, it takes in a generative function or a generator function sorry and uh, you just specify the batch size which I've taken to be 256 in this case okay so uh, yeah and then you had to specify how many how many uh, runs per epoch okay so I have this many examples you divide it by the batch size and you end up by end up with the number of um, runs per epoch that you that you would need okay so once I train this and then I predict it on my test set, which keep in mind is just those thousand that I imported before, I end up with uh, a 90, 90.5% 90 accuracy. Okay. Now the number of parameters over here, it's, it's quite large. So we have 39,000 uh, images and, and 39,000 uh, pixels. And the reason is the first layer, uh, if you if go down here, is a 784, uh, 784 pixels. 
and we connect it up onto 50. Okay, so, and again, there's biases as well, so we need to add 50 over there, and then we end up with 39,000, which is the number of parameters over here. Okay, so there's quite, an, quite a large number of parameters, and this is where convolutional nets comes in. So I guess one of the biggest reasons that we use convolutional nets is to reduce the number of parameters. But let's talk about what convolutional nets are. Um, so it's basically, uh, think of it as weights, right? But the, so, so the weights over here, so the yellow thing over here is, is, is a set of weights, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it across the image like this. And over here, just keep in mind that the ones are only in the diagonal. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply it with that image and then we're going to add those numbers. So for example here, when you look at the two diagonals um, and we multiply those numbers, we get one times one times. So we add up these three plus this one, which will end up giving me four. Move on to this, this, this next section, we will end up with three because we have one, two, three and then zero, zero. Okay. And then we, once we go over here, we will get a four. Okay, so make sure you understand how we get these numbers, four, three, four. Okay, let's focus on this one over here. How did I end up with two? So the reason I have two is because of this one and one. So keep in mind, all we're looking at is the diagonals. When we, when we move it on top of this, that's how we get the two. Okay, so this is called the convolved feature. Now, in convolution, that's usually what we do is we, we pad the, big, the actual image with zeros so that we can start off, we can start off with on the on the edge as well. So the the image and the actual convolve feature will end up being the same size in general. Okay, so um, so yeah, so that's done by padding a bunch of zeros around the actual image. So let's let's move on. Oh, and um, one last thing: these weights over here don't have to be ones. They they can actually be any any number. So it's just for illustration purposes that I put one. And what you generally do is you have more than one of these weight filters. So uh, in, in, the, in the, the case that I was, I was going to do, there'll be 32. Okay, so if this is the image, in our case, we have a 28 by 28 by one image. Oh, sorry, let's, let's focus over here. So I have a 28 by 28 by one. And then the next layer, uh, so forget about the fact that it's reducing size. We'll talk about that in a bit. But it will be a 28 by 28 by 32 feature set. Okay, and um, we'll talk about how the size reduces, but essentially that's what's happening. So, um, right, so this is how you build uh, a convolutional net. So you add a com, a COM2D layer, okay, so not a dense layer anymore, COM2D. You have to specify the kernel size, okay, so uh, the kernel size is basically what this, the, the size of this yellow, uh, I'll call it a convolution mask, but you can follow whatever you want, but that's the kernel size. Okay, so the padding equals same. That ensures that the that the uh, that uh, from what I remember that the uh, uh, pads the image by zeros. Okay, and then there's the activation, which is the value, and the input input size. Uh, we had to say width, so twenty eight by twenty eight by one. Okay, you see why why I had to specify what one. It's it's main. It's a lot to do with the fact that there's RGB. So okay, so the number of channels, I suppose. Um, but convolutional nets, they need uh, a, a 3D input, okay? Even even though it's convolution 2D, it needs a, a, a third dimension. So if, if I had convolution 3D, there will um, there'll be a, a fourth dimension, uh, so to speak. Now, before you go to the last layer, we need to, we absolutely need to flatten it, okay? So let, let's, let me just show you uh, this, this summary. So... Um, the the output, so once I put the input in, the output is going to be a 28 by 28 by 32, okay, because I have 32 filters, and and then this is the number of parameters, okay. Uh, these are the number of, sorry, okay, forget about the number of parameters. I have a 28 by 28 by 32 feature set, and once I flatten it, I, I take all those numbers, and they flatten it, I end up with 25,082. Basically, I multiply all these three things, okay? So, in reference to the image over here, this is what's happening. It's taking the convolved feature set and then flattening it. And that's essential with any convolutional network. You need to flatten it before we move on to the last uh, last activation layer, okay? So, in this case, a softmax. 
So the rest is exactly the same as before. Now, um, I've gone ahead and fit this already, so the rest of it is exact, exactly the same. Um, or actually, one, one, uh, one thing that I did change is the train generator. Okay, so the, with the generator, I've, I've actually reshaped it this time. So I've reshaped it to not only 28 by 28, but also called it a 1 as well. Okay, so the last one is important because th that's what it's expecting uh, as a number of channels. Okay, so this minus 1 over here, um, that's, that will correspond to batch size, but that's something that's a quirk of NumPy that you can just leave the first number as minus 1. You don't have to specify. It. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so once I fit that, the accuracy, the accuracy becomes 93%. Now let's talk about the max max pooling. So this is how the this is what happened when we when we um, reduced the the size. Okay, so when max pooling pooling happens, what happens is you you take the combo uh, feature set, and then you look at the surrounding. So let's say a two by two surrounding, we're going to take the maximum. So in this case, the maximum is going to be four. So just imagine there were there were a bunch of zeros over here. The max pooling of this thing will be a again a four, um, and so on. So you literally take the maximum of that region. Okay, and that's how you end up reducing this this uh, the size. So in this case, it reduces it by half on the x and y dimensions. Keep you keep reducing by half and so on up until the last layer before you take your um, before you take your um, flatten. Okay, so. So looking at that again, taking looking at the max pool. Uh, oops, a bit too far. Take the max pool. In this case, you just need to specify the pooling size, which is going to be a two by two region. And yeah, so uh, so as before, you have the twenty by twenty by thirty two output, but then the next one halves it. So twenty eight becomes fourteen, fourteen, and over here. So if you look at the number of parameters over here, is sixty three thousand. But before, before I didn't, didn't do the thing, is two hundred fifty thousand, okay. And just so you know, when I do the when I did the prediction, uh, it was ninety one percent prediction. So in general, it it uh, so yes, it did drop, but it only drops by a tiny amount, okay. But uh, this like as soon as you start doing multi layer convolutional nets, this it really doesn't matter once you that you take the max pool or not. The whole point is that you you save on computation time when you do max pooling, okay? Because you're reducing the number of parameters. So over here I have a, a three layer convolutional network. Again, notice how I've, I've added flatten right at the end before I take the uh, the last layer. So once I do that, I end up with, so, so the max pooling will take it to 14. So notice how when, whenever I do convolution, it doesn't change the size. So at least on the X and Y axis, it doesn't change the size. This 32 over here, by the way, is only, is only because I put 32 over here. If I put 64, it would be 64 over here. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, so as soon as you do the max pooling, it halves in size along the x and y axes, and so 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 on and so forth. Okay. Um, but once I did this thing, my accuracy went up to 96. Okay, so it actually so. Uh, I've, keep in mind, I've only done one epoch over here, so I could probably get somewhere near hundred percent accuracy had I had I had enough enough time to run this. Um, okay, last thing before we finish off, let's talk about the number of parameters. So the number of parameters in the first layer. So how do you, how did I get that? So I got the three hundred twenty by doing this. So keep in mind, it's a three by three weight matrix. Okay, and I have thirty two of them. So, so in the first, in the very first one, it'll end up being uh, three by three by one by thirty-two. So the re the reason I have one over here is that that's that's the depth of the weight matrix, not the image of the weight matrix by thirty-two. Okay, but now if I do that, I only get two hundred eighty-eight. So how did I get three hundred twenty? And that's to, that's to do with the bias. Okay, so that's because I have 32 weight, weights, I'm going to add 32 biases as well. I end up with 320. And then when we look over here, this, this 9,000 parameters all of a sudden uh, from the second layer on. So how did that happen? Now, even though it says convolutional 2D, it actually, uh, the 2D refers to the fact that it moves 
it moves along the 2D part. Okay, so when we when we look at this one, it's moving across and down. Okay, that's the only thing that that's 2D about it. But the actual weight matrix on itself, in uh, in this case, is going to be yes, it'll be a three by three. Okay. But the thing is, because this output a 32, so the first the first feature set, sorry, output a uh, 14 layers, 14 lay. Uh, let me start again. The first the first one output 32 in depth. That's I would need to have a depth of 32, and then I have 32 layers of this, and then I have my bias parameter. So I am end up with 9248. So again, there was a three by three weight weight set. I have the the and then because the depth of the image was 32, I had to multiply so the number of weights over here. So this so if you for, forgetting about the um, about the biases per kernel, we have nine by 32 weights. Okay, because it actually goes deep as well, even though it's convolution two D, and then there's there's thirty two, um, and then there's thirty two uh, kernels, thirty two of those kernels. Okay, so if I if I change the number over here to say sixteen, uh, or let's make it, I know it's something like twelve, right? And then we look at the model of summary. So over here we've got three, four, six, eight, and the and the the way that we got that is going to be. 3, the first thing is going to be 3 by 3 by again 32, okay, and then we're going to add up, for well, I said 12, right, so the, the, the second layer will be, and there will be 12 of these kernels, and of course I have to add up 12, uh, because there's 12 bytes, it's 3, 4, 6, 8, okay, so that's, that's it for the convolutional uh, layer uh, tutorial, so if you have any questions or comments, please let me know, but thanks for watching.